Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. They were supposed to hit start. Man. Now I'm embarrassed on stream. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Welcome back to our second match coverage of the night between Team Team Name and Team te Name. It's Team Name. No, it's Team Name. They wanted an accent mark on the E, but my font doesn't support it, so it just looks like Team Name. Okay, we're just gonna call them Team Name. Team Name. It is Team Name versus Team. Oh my gosh, I forgot the second team. Oh my gosh. Team. Replace Alan. Team replace Alan. It's so obvious because Alan's on that team, and the joke is that they want to replace him. I'm back. I'm at a hundred percent mental capacity and functioning. I'm a teak. Hello. So picks and bands coming out real quick. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeed. So we see the Vi Caitlyn ban. This time we're not going to see target ban swords replace Alan. Last time we saw three bans going towards. Uh, Alan, we saw the Kalista, we saw the uh, two other 80 carry bands that I suppose he plays. I'm not sure what they were, but there were three bands that were 80 carry targeted at. Uh, calm down, I'm trying, Alan. Um, this time around, only the Caitlyn going down. Uh, so this time around, he should be on a comfort pick, and he should be able to play his style. And we'll have to see if uh, maybe Team uh, Replace Alan can, uh, can pull out a win this time around. But uh, Team... Name definitely looking for the same thing. They want to win this time around. They are there. Both of these teams are in the losers bracket, losing their first matches of the tournament. But they are here to redeem themselves. And uh, we see the Scion, Lissandra, and Azir bans from Team Replace Allen. Azir ban really interesting. Azir not really a champ that we see a whole lot, but I'm guessing that somebody on the I'm guessing that Suncatcher plays a lot of Azir. I know he got target banned pretty heavily in the other match that he ended up playing, the one against um. That one was against Team Manuel Jimenez, I believe. <laughs> he yes. was forced onto the Katarina in that game. Uh, Suncatcher on his most played of his three champions on his most played. Lissandra and Azir both making that list, so definitely target bans there. And Scion, a massive tank that is extremely annoying. Team Replace Allen clearly don't want to deal with that. And a first pick. Gragas jungle from buff to plank. Sejuani was open, but he elects not to go for it this time around. Sejuani, a fairly strong jungler at the moment. We'll have to see if Komari Koshigaya will pick that Sejuani. I don't think we'll be seeing it very early on into the draft because Gragas has been secured for team name. So secu securing Sejuani isn't really necessary. We'll have to see what the first two pickups are here. Kalista, a very strong pick in itself. I don't believe we'll see the bard lock in i think that's koshigaya just trolling around a little bit um but the Callista definitely will be locked in i believe we'll have to see what that second pick is though yeah dinger dong are also being over there but however the other team does pick up the sejuani so the piggy and the ghost lady Callista and sejuani being picked up by team replace alan let's see what kind of support that they want to pair that Callista with usually when you see people playing Callista, they they pick up a hard engaged support, somebody like an Annie, somebody like even Kennen getting really, really popular nowadays. Probably not going to happen, but still a possibility. But Alan going for that late game hyper carry role that Callista does offer. This is wanting a very strange pick regarding the draft picks. Um, we saw Gragas first pick, so it's not really necessary to pick up the Sejuani this early. I would have liked to see team, um, team, <laughs> team replace Alan pick up a. So, uh, maybe a priority support pick, or maybe even a uh, priority AD or well, they already picked an AD carry. Maybe um, just another pick overall. Maybe they're just trying to hide their uh, mid and jungle, but picking up a priority support here might have been better than picking up the Sejuani because that was available for them at any time in this draft. Um, but maybe they just don't want to show their hand. So, that could also be a very viable strategy. But a Nautilus and a Jinx coming out for team name, and I, well, we're just going to go ahead and call him Jason because that's a very inappropriate name. So Jinx will probably go to Jason in the bot lane. That is one of his comfort picks. And uh, a Nautilus support to back it up as well. So maybe a lot of kill potential there once they hit level 6. 
Yeah, especially considering at level 6, Nautilus hits that. Everybody likes to say the four types of CC that Nautilus has. The Root, the Stun, the Knockup, the Slow. So, Just to clarify, it is a Snare, not a Stun. No, the stun, once you get knocked up, you're stunned for a little bit afterwards. Oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, Four forms of CC the, regardless. That's if, part of the knocking. No, you're stunned for a little bit afterwards. Once you come down, you're stunned for like half a second or like a second. Yeah, but it's part of the knocking. Anyway, Nautilus, if he gets on you, you're going to be stuck for a little bit. Is what I'm <laughs> trying. A little bit. Holy moly. Oh, look at this low damage team coming from red team, though. The Thresh and the Shivana being locked in. Only damage source so far coming from Kalista. So hopefully they pick up a high damage mid laner on top of this. But we see on team, team name, the Mundo and the Ari being hovered right now. Mundo, so not, not much damage coming out there either, if you think about it. <laughs> um, Jinx and Ari, the two threats there. Uh, but I think that'll be enough. Nautilus brings quite a bit of damage. Gragas brings quite a bit of supportive damage. Mundo also brings quite a bit of supportive damage. Same with Sejuani and Shivana. So I think both teams are fairly well set in terms of damage on their team compositions. We'll just have to go ahead and see what Moshi balls here. Decides to pick up in the mid lane. Colin Motri has requested that we call him Colin Mochi Balls for this stream. So we're going to go ahead and do that. For those of you that aren't familiar with Mochi Balls, they are, uh, I believe it's uh, Japanese. Is it Japanese? Are you familiar with it? Well, you think all Asians just know where everything is from? But yeah, they're Japanese. All right. Well, then. They're delicious, too. A little bit too. of a fence there. It is very delicious. They're, they're, I think it's uh, dough. Wrapped around ice cream. If you haven't tried mochi, I definitely recommend you go to your local Asian supermarket or a Trader Joe's and pick up some mochi for yourself to try. It's yum, yum, yum. You can also get them at Yogurtland. For those of you that are not aware, Colin Mochi Ball is going to go ahead and pick up the Oriana for the last pick here. And um, an interesting matchup there between herself and Ari. Um... That matchup is relatively a skill matchup, so we'll have to see what happens in that mid lane. Hopefully. Actually, there is no hope. Yeah, so what do you think about these two team comps? These two team comps are going to create a lot, a lot of fighting, especially if they both manage to get to the late game with uh, within relative, like, distance of each other gold wise it's gonna be really really scary Callista and oriana doing ridiculous amounts of damage in the late game jinx and ari both scaling really really well nautilus gragas mundo all people that love to just jump on the back line and just hit everything in sight especially nautilus even as a support if you get him to that point where he builds enough health he's able to spam riptides and have that titan's wrath shield on him for days doing a whole bunch of aoe damage to the back line and then we have the Sejuani and the Shivana for the insane engage. Thresh for the peel and the little pick potential is going to be really, really exciting. I think it's just going to go down to who gets who snowballing first. Where do you think first blood is going to happen? Oh, you want me to guess? Am I going to get a mystery skin if I guess right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> From you? Yeah. I think Colin Mochi Balls is going to get it because this stream is sponsored by Yogurtland and Mochi, which is totally <laughs> why we're calling him Colin Mochi Balls. So it would only make sense for that to happen because we all know sponsors all right. make the games. Well, since I offered you a mystery gift, I'm going to go ahead and assume you're going to do me the same courtesy. Absolutely. And I believe that, calm down, I'm trying. Alan on this Callista will be the one to pick up first blood. We'll have to see who's right on this prediction i am kind of known as the prophet actually i've gotten every single prediction wrong so you know well i did predict that team cash money would win and they did win so there was that yeah we were we were both right on that one so we were together in our correctness maybe they'll get first blood at the exact same time the game will bug out and just give us mystery skins for free it'll come alive like skynet oh my god one can only dream for free mystery gifts Right, but then again, if they're always free, wouldn't they make them? Wouldn't that make them a little less special? No. Oh, that's true. I would love to have all the skins that I can't get anymore. Wouldn't we all? Yeah. 
All right. Bit. Well, anyways. But this bot lane matchup, really, really scary for the Jinx Nautilus, considering that they have considerably, I would say, considerably more kill pressure than the Thresh Callista early on, considering just the amount of, like, lockdown that Jinx and Nautilus can bring to the table, Jinx having snares of her own. So we'll take a look at that. I think jungle presence in the bot lane is really what's going to set this game forward. Um, Ari, one of those champions that can snowball really, really, really well as well. Oriana needs a little bit extra gold to do exactly what Ari does in terms of snowballing. But Oriana, once she gets ahead, also, also terrifying. But just managated just a little bit more than Ari is. But Mundo is going to be real, real scary in the late game, considering that guy just gets unkillable. But really, really considered a weak laner in the early game. So we'll see how Blahmaster manages to hold out on that. Considering that he's really comfortable on Scion. Scion, somebody who's really easy to farm with and bully around in lane with. Mundo being a little more on the um, on the conservative side when it comes to laning since you know you don't have a large health pool to draw from to cast your abilities nonstop. Man, I want Mochi now. Well then, looks like we will be loading into game, so let's announce both teams before we start off on any of the beautiful analysis that our amazing casters provide. So on the blue, so well, I have to wait for this black screen to go away so I can actually announce who's on which team. There we go. Alright, well then, on the blue side... We have Buff the Plank on Santa Gregus in the jungle. We have Fusion Fire on Subterranean Nautilus playing the support. With him, we have Firecracker Jinx. Jason on that <laughs> AD carry Jinx. And then in the top lane, we have Blahmaster 6000 on Dr. Mundo with that TP flash massive skills in your base cleaver status. And then in the mid lane, we have Popstar Ari. Looking very beautiful. Sun catcher. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Fun, fun, fun. What about the red side? Take it away. What about the red side on Team Replace? Alan, let's get this overlay up for you so you guys know who is who. On the red side, we have in the top lane. Oh my gosh, this name is impossible. We have a Shivana in the top lane. Anna Kluzmos. You're going to be called Shivana. In the jungle, we have Kamari Koshigaya playing Shivana. In the mid lane, we have Colin Mochi Ball, sponsored by Mochi and Yogurtland on Oriana. In the bot lane, we have the duo, the two, the only. Calm down on trying Alan and Lyric on Thresh and Callista. So, getting started off, our predictions have been made. Atik giving it to Alan on Callista. Myself giving it to our highlight sponsor, hashtag Yogurtland player, Colin Mochi Balls. We'll see who wins that. It's probably going to be me, let's be honest. Um, well, I don't believe that, so just putting that out there. Let's see how these level 1s pan out. Looks like it's going to be standard stuff coming out. We haven't really seen any invades in this tournament. Haven't really seen any first bloods happening before 1.30 that I can recall. Do you recall any of them? First bloods before 1.30? Not yep. that I can recall, no. Yep, don't think we've really seen many invades. Most teams just opting for standard starts want to get in the lanes and make them plays. I really want a mystery skin. I'm going to open it on stream and be real happy when I get something like Spirit Guard Udyr or Pulse Fire as or oh DJ Sona. DJ Booty Sona. Well, it's nice to dream, but dreams don't always come true. So I feel a little bit sorry for you. You know where dreams do come true, though? Um, dreams I often know, do come true, come true at your local yogurt land when you order a nice soft serve yogurt and get a whole bunch of mochi balls and then visit your yo local yogurt land today. Say that Colin Mochi Ball sent you. They'll totally respond to that. Anyway, Monster is about to spawn out. We're going to cast this Gromp fight and this Krug fight real quick. Because that's where all the action is. Looks like they're gonna... No, I'm not... That would be really, really awful. I should cheer every time somebody gets to see us. Well, Oriana picking up the first CS... Nope, never mind, JK. Ari picked up the first lane CS of the game after the not... The Gragas and the Sejuani picked up. 
Grump and Golem respectively. And Mochi Balls looks like he has hopped off to an early 2 CS lead here. And he does have one creep left in the wave. Will he get it? Will he get it? He gets it! 3 CS lead for Colin Mochi Balls in the mid lane. GG. Let's call it quits here. Team, replace Allen with the win. That was an absolutely riveting game. Almost as riveting as our surrender in the loser's bracket. <laughs> These t <laughs> I can't believe they surrendered. I guess they hate free money. Oh, looks like level 2 being hit early. Fusion Fire and Jason gonna get the lockdown early on Delara. Come here, come back. It says the dredge line. First blood goes to Jason. We're both wrong. Well, I was technically right because I predicted it would happen in the bot lane. Oh, whatever. Mr. I'm. Oh, boy. Calm down. I'm trying. Putting down the deep stow. One thing to note is, uh. Calm down, I'm trying did burn heal, trying to save the Thresh, but it was not enough. And uh, Jinx did burn flash as well, so we'll have to see if uh, Suzrani comes in for an early gank. But looks like Buff the Plane gonna go in for a gank right here. Colin getting stunned out, gonna flash away, gets tagged by the charm! However, Orb of Deception and the Ignite getting put out onto that Orianna, gonna flash in for the last auto. However, Suncatcher, are they- oh my gosh! Barely makes it out of their life with just about 20 HP. Two clean kills early on for Team Name. Team name jumping out to an early lead here, and we'll have to see if they run away with this one. We'll have to see if Calm Down I'm Trying has anything to say about that. And the 80 carry low roll, he has picked up to Kalista, which is one of his favorites. Um, we'll have to see if he can get anything done in this matchup. Yeah, that, was, that, that bot lane kill is really, really scary. They went in the exact moment that they hit level 2. Kalista and Thresh still at level 1, so unable to use that play or whatever. L spell that he would have leveled up to get themselves out of there. So they timed that really, really well. Jinx leveling up the Flame Chompers immediately. Nautilus getting the Riptide and the Dredge, dredge Line. Blocking them down for a good amount of time. So, way to use that level advantage to get... Yep. In the mid lane, we saw Mochi Balls falling. Uh, I think Mochi Balls definitely needs to use Flash much earlier there as the Gragas eat. He got hit by the Gragas and that really set up the rest of that gank. Once he was slowed, it made the, even though he flashed, it made the Ari Charm extremely easy to land. And he did end up dying for it. Okay, this is really weird though. Ari, even though she did pick up first, oh, Fusion Fire gets hit by the hook. Flame Chopper is gonna come down and respond, trying to get themselves out of there. Calm down, I'm trying, gets exhausted. Gets Dredge Lane back. Jason might get pick up another kill here, but he gets exhausted in response. However, the Ren does finish off that Nautilus. <laughs> Jason trying to put down damage onto Alan, but Alan manages to flash away. So both ADCs both pick up one in the first five minutes of the game. No shortage of blood. That no, no. Oh my gosh, English is really hard. No shortage of blood there. All right. So technically, I was right. Calm down. I'm trying. Did pick up first blood for his team. Oh god. So, thank you for the mystery gifts. And, um. Mochi Ball is here with a 3 CS lead in the mid lane, holding off that 3 CS lead from that first wave that we saw. And, uh, this top lane <laughs> has turned into a <laughs> pretty heavy, uh, farm fest with Shivana coming out on top with about 10 CS lead there as well. So, um. Bot lane, though. With a CS lead for Jason on Jinx. That's a lot of alliteration there, but um, only a 600 gold deficit here, so I'll have to see which team converts their kills into something more. Yeah, what I was saying before that fight broke out bottom was I thought that it was interesting after Suncatcher picks up the first, no not the first blood, but picks up the kill onto Mochi Balls. He had opted to go for Forbidden Idol first instead of picking up he might not, he probably did have enough for the Fiendish Codex, but generally once you get a lead early on in lane, you want to go for more combat stats. And Forbidden Idol, while it does offer you the 10% cooldown reduction, so does Fiendish Codex, but Fiendish Codex gives you like a decent amount of ability power on top of that, so. Yeah, it's very good of you to point that out. I didn't really notice that right now, but um, until you mentioned it. But uh, if you don't have the gold for Fiendish Codex, you should pick up another Doran's Ring or maybe even an Amptome, but you don't want to be coming back to lane once you get a kill with the Forbidden Idol. That gives you no combat stats, and Oriana has a double Doran's Ring, so definitely the damage advantage in her favor. She's probably going to go ahead and pick up a Chalice afterwards as well to prevent any 1v1 kills happening from that early kill picked up by Ari. Ari still managing to chunk down Mochi Balls to a considerable amount. 
Colin sitting up at about half health, forced to chug pots to stay alive. Blom Master getting pressure just a decent bit. Looks like there's about a 15, 14, 15 now CS differential in the top lane. Level 6, both up for those top laners. We'll have to see if Shivana can convert the CS lead into something more. If she can force Mundo to base and use his TP to come back to lane and she can base and walk back to lane, she might be able to do something with that TP advantage in the bottom lane. I love, I love bot lane gangs from top lane with TPs early on in the game. It's not usually that expected, but when it happens, it's glorious. Oh, one to say tower hit there. Um, but Blommaster tanking out the creeps here. And the bot lane, we see Gragas waiting around a little bit for a gank. Callista has no flash, but she does have heal. Jinx with the opposite has no heal, but has the flash. But Jinx's heal will be coming up shortly. And it is calm down, I'm trying. And Lyric in trouble here. Uh, we'll have to see. Nope, Gragas does walk away from that gank. Does not want to wait too long. Goes back to the farm game. And... Once again, Greg is not picking up Devourer. He goes for the Chilling Smite as well, same as last game. I'm not sure I agree with these pickups. I would much rather see a Devourer. Really helps the farm game. Really helps overall. Mundo is really low in this top lane though. But he's still... No, wait, he doesn't have ulti. But it will be coming up shortly. So he will probably pop that as soon as it's up. Yeah, Greg has spent a lot of time in that brush without realizing that it was... <laughs> it was warded. Oh, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> so, Alan, not quite the guru we thought he was. Not that hard to notice that a jungler is sitting right there in front of me when there's a ward in there. So, so Mochi Balls, even though he has a CS lead, is taking a beating in this mid lane. He's about at half health, and if Ari lands a charm at this stage in the game, he's done for. Let's hope Ari lands a charm, because I love to see some action. Plus, the buff transfer would be complete. No blue buff going to Ari in that mid lane. Yeah, I believe Gragas did pick... Actually, Gragas doesn't even have blue buff. Where did the blue buff go? Has blue buff not spawned yet for them? I guess not. He must have done a abnormal clear. Maybe. Oh, but it looks like in the bot lane, they do get caught out down here. Jason gets hooked, rendered, forced to heal out of there. Probably going to make it out of there alive. But Fusion Fire overstaying just a little bit. Looks like they are going to disengage. Buff the plane coming in, <laughs> electing not to go in for the follow-up damage, knowing that Jason's quite a bit low. However, in the mid lane, it looks like we did see a fight go down. And by see a fight go down, I mean completely miss it. <laughs> looks like Komari and Mochi Balls did pick up the kill onto Suncatcher, though. Yeah, getting... Suncatcher with a massive... He just oh, really Hook lands in the bot lane. Fusion Fire getting tacked up a whole lot. Dredge Line lands onto the Kalista. Riptide coming. No, Riptide not coming out. Calm down. I'm trying to get sniped by Jason. Get excited. Goes Jinx. Nautilus hitting level 6 immediately. Gets the... Gets the ultimate down onto Lyric. Lyric should be going down in just one more auto. Support does get the kill secure onto that. So nice two-piece for team name down in the bot lane. Yeah, and Compton, I'm trying, not even using his heal, but back to the mid lane, what happened there was uh, Komari Koshigaya just waiting for Ari to go aggressive, and she flashes in, and she misses the charm, which completely sets up that counter gank to work. If she had hit the charm, she could have bursted the Ariana, and she could have just walked away with the remaining two charges of her ultimate, because Sejuani wouldn't have had enough damage to finish her off, but she whiffed the charm, Sejuani landed her ultimate, Oriana was still alive to bring the deeps into the fight, and uh, Oriana or Ari did fall there, but in the bot lane, uh, calm down on trying with a huge misplay, did not heal, and fell to the Jinx rocket, maybe not expecting that much damage to come out, and he did die for it. Oh, Alan, oh, he, does get he does get snared by the Flame Chomper, so he does have follow-up in time. Team is split right now on top of Team Nay. However, Buff the Plank does get snagged by the hook. TP coming in response. Let's see if it gets here in time. Mundo arriving to the fight, looking for the back lane, realizing that he's all alone, all by himself, in the middle of five people, probably gonna die, pops the ultimate, <laughs> does get out of there alive, however, looks like they're just gonna lose the jungler, Lara comes in for the flash hook, does catch out Mundo, Mundo probably gonna die right here, oh, not gonna die, finally gonna die, I'm real indecisive in this team fight, but eventually, <laughs> team replace Alan does pick up too. Yeah, so even though Team Name did pick up the Dragon, Team Replace Alan was able to respond with two kills of their own, and Mundo saved his Flash for far too long at the back end of that team fight, and he did go down for it. He bur ended up burning the Flash at the end, but it was way too late, and he did die, and it looks like Team Replace Alan 
will be pushing this <laughs> mid lane turret, but Jinx! Jinx picks up the kill! Oh, that's something that Team Replace Allen really should have been more cognizant about. The fact that three of them were really low. The fact that Jinx has a global execute. That was an oopsie that you can't afford to give to a hyper carry like Jinx. Jinx on a killing spree right now with three yeah. kills to her name. Three kills. We'll have to see how this pans out. But Jinx very big right now. Almost has the Infinity Edge completed 12 minutes into the game. And... Uh, Calm down, I'm trying. Also has completed his Blood of the Rune King, so he does have a little bit of an advantage in this lane until Jinx picks up that Infinity Edge. But if he gets hooked by Nautilus, that advantage is thrown straight out the window. He'll be crowd controlled into Oblivion, so he can't afford to get hooked again. I like that both supports have hooks in this game. Makes for a really intimate team fight. You come so, here. No, you come here. So Mochi Balls and Suncatcher both have their first items completed. Uh, Suncatcher did go for the Marlonomicon, so a little bit less or no magic resist. And uh, Colin Mochi Balls went for the Athene, so he has that magic resist. We'll keep him alive. We'll keep him safe from a little bit of the Gragas damage, a little bit of the Ari damage, a little bit of the Mundo damage, a little bit of the Nautilus damage. So a pretty good Athene's pick up there. Good judgment on his part. Athenes is only for people who are scared of their lane opponents. Regardless, a, a very smart pickup. <laughs> it looks like Fusion Fire does catch out Lyric. Forced to use a face call to get their support out of there cleanly. Oh my gosh, my camera just went crazy. You're welcome, stream. That's an ultimate down for Callista, though. A lot more kill pressure on this bot lane right now. Mundo is pretty low in this top lane, though. Mundo constantly forced under tower. Shivana doing a lot. But this CS lead hasn't really grown from the early stages of the game, staying at that constant 10 to 12. But Shivana has picked up a Sunfire. Sunfire and Shivana. Cinder Hall coming on Sejuani shortly. Everybody wants to oh, go. It looks like Kamari. That is three people on one support. Calm down, I'm trying. Does pick up a kill onto that. Buff the play coming in for the. Revenge, how are the Super Mega Death Rocket? Not enough to finish off Larry. Calm down, I'm trying, doing his best to jump forward with that Marshall Poise. Picks up a two piece for himself. Callista getting more and more gold. Alan. Wow. So, one of the micro things about that team fight was calm down, I'm trying. Pop the heel to save Larry. So oh, Suncatcher, Suncatcher. Suncatcher ran into four. Trying to get it up a cleanup kill. Does tack up Mochi balls. However, Sun Treasure does indeed. Tags one with the shockwave. Mochi does. However, one more auto should do it. That's two for Team Name. Alan picks up another one in that exchange. Komari doing his best to lock down Jason. Jason manages to make it away. Just a couple of autos from death. So right when we thought it was over, it wasn't. Team Name picking up two in exchange for one again in that delayed skirmish in the bot lane. Yeah, and that's going to go ahead and tie up the kill 7-7, seven to seven, but it does look like Team Replace Allen will be picking up this bot lane turret to give themselves a one tower advantage 15 minutes into the game to expand their gold lead to about 1.5 thousand gold. Uh, and Nautilus going to have to back away from that one after uh, missing his hook a little bit. Didn't look like there was any follow up anyways, so maybe a little bit fortunate for him to have missed that hook. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what he had planned after that. And noting that bot lane skirmish, Buff the Plank came in. I noticed that when he came in with a body slam, he was pretty much completely out of mana at that point. So Shivana here, she she should have realized that Mundo's ultimate was down. Obviously, he's been using it in lane, and she should be keeping track of that. And she could have dived Mundo in that scenario because she knew the jungler had just been bot lane. Uh, Mundo with only 300 health and no ultimate. An easy dive for Shivana, also no flash. Um, so relatively safe there for her to go ahead and dive that, but you know, she's playing a little bit too passive in my opinion. Yeah, Blahmaster getting away time and time again, using his ultimate to sustain himself in lane. Let's see if Ana Kluzmos ever decides to pull the trigger on that. Dragon is up in about 35 seconds. TP is up for both top laners. So we'll see what happens there. Looks like, however, they are looking for a kill on the Sari, trying to zone her out as much as they can. Vision in favor. They do have a pink and a whole bunch of wards around that pit. Team replace Allen does. Yeah, both so of these top laners also have teleport available. So if a fight breaks out, we can expect to see both of them come down and assist their teammates in the 5v5 team fight. So taking a look at gold, not a whole lot of gold separating these two teams. 
However, what's going to be really, really scary is how these ADCs position themselves. However, above the plane does go in, gets the follow-up from Fusion Fire with the dredge line, gets gets frozen by the Sejuani El Jason, forced to back away. TP comes in, Ana Kluzmos anticipating something, but Mundo, not a whole lot of health available, forced to back before he even thinks about a TP at this moment. So it looks like Team Replace Allen is going to go for this dragon, but it looks like Team Name still want to contest this. Jason doing a whole lot of damage on the back lane. Suncatcher does pick up one while Allen does secure the dragon and Mochi picks up a kill on the support as well. They are going to disengage after that. But having that having that extra man there in the form of Shivana really helped him out because Mundo was forced to back at that point. Yeah, they could have done so much more in my opinion, but Shivana is refusing to use her ultimate there. She could have dove in um, and secured some more kills for her team, but opting... To not even use the ultimate, a little bit strange there. Could have definitely used the follow up on the Oriana ulti with the Shivana knockback as well, but no dice on that one. And it looks like Team Name will take down the mid lane turret to pick up their first turret of the game and even out this gold lead. A gold lead virtually exactly dead, <laughs> even right now 27, 26.7k for both teams. But looks like they are looking for the Shivana in the top lane, saying, Hey, Shivana, if you're not going to dive our Mundo, our Mundo's looking to dive you. It doesn't look like any response really coming from Team Replace Allen. They're just going to let this tower go for free. Not a whole lot you can do as a Shivana 1 versus 3, especially against a scary, scary Ari. But in the mid lane, a very beautiful reaction by Team Replace Allen. They should be able to pick this up. Mundo, a little bit of a wasted TP there. He won't be able to do much here. Mundo still looking to go on this back lane. As soon as this tower goes down, they're going to look to get him. However, Thresh doesn't elect a hook there. Maybe he was afraid that it was a baited situation. Jason coming in from the backside. Fusion Fire gets tagged by a hook. That's going to be a lot, a lot of damage put down onto him. Trying to burn all of its abilities so he doesn't go down for nothing. Mochi, one more auto from death. The Spirit, Spirit Rush does finish him off. The Super Mega Death Rocket does completely whip. Suncatcher picks up a three-piece. Looks like they're trying to storm up this mid lane. Yep, so team replace Alan Sting, overstaying their welcome, getting hit by that Jinx um, slow as well. Setting up the follow-up from the rest of the team. They were able to go ahead and collapse on them in the mid lane after taking that top turret. And team replace Alan just staying a little bit too long again, uh, paying the price with three lives going down in exchange for only one infusion fire. And it looks like they will secure this last turret in the outer ring of turrets. And um, looks like that will go down. So the turrets evened out three to three, but team name has jumped out to a 2000 gold lead in the mid game here at 20 minutes. If both ADCs pretty, pretty scary right now. Interesting seeing Allen opt for the Bork build first. I feel like that Bork build is a little bit outdated considering that most Callista players elect to go Bloodthirster first. And the reason that you want to do that is Callista is reliant way more on her rent stacks to do damage rather than getting crits from an item like IE. So having that Bloodthirster first, especially for the past, I mean the 20% lifesteal is great for staying alive in extended teeth fights. But what's really, really valuable is that overheal you get from the passive Bloodthirster shield. So gonna lose out on that. However, does pick up the extra attack speed from the Bork. So we'll see how that works out for him. Hurricane looking to be finished next. Yup, and she will hit quite a bit of power once she completes that hurricane and, and uh, calm down. I'm trying, he is 5 2 and 2 on that Callista, but Jinx just as fed with 4 kills of her own on 5 assists and no deaths here. Um, and a 30 CS advantage to boot. Looks like they are looking for even more blood on this Callista. Fusion Fire trying to look for a dredge line onto Callista, however, gets rendered and slowed, so it doesn't look like they're going to be able to chase that down. Yeah, Komari Koshigaya is relatively low right now, only at about half his health bar. Not sure if they're going to look for an engage here, uh, but they may. Noticing that Gragas isn't here, but considering that the tower is... Gonna be really, really tough for them to really do much. Yeah, if a team fight breaks out right now, I think I'm gonna have to give the advantage to team, uh, team name. Because Komari Koshigai just doesn't have the same tank stats that Gragas brings. Gragas has the Righteous Glory completed as well as his uh, Juggernaut item. Whereas 
Koshi Gaia only has the Juggernaut, and then he has a Sidestone, and then Mobility Boot. So that's that's no comp. That's about 1600 gold dumped into no combat sets whatsoever. It looks like they're playing chicken in this mid lane right now, I'm trying to lay down as much siege as possible with the Ari and the Jing Zaps. I am, I anticipate if Team Nay manages to land a decent amount of poke, that that Nautilus and Gragas are gonna look to go in. Gragas does have that righteous glory. So having Nautilus on the front line to just charge in and ult the back line is going to be really, really scary. It's really interesting seeing a siege without a tower in the mid lane. It's pretty funny. So in the mid lane and in the bot lane, we see massive waves building up. And team uh, name is going to have to react to this. So I do believe this top lane turret will oh be going down. Oh my god. That's Beautiful really, really big. Fresh hook by Lyric. And Jinx a little bit too far forward there, has to burn the flash, but a nice flash by her realizing that she had stepped a little bit too far forward gets herself out of danger very quickly there. Yeah, especially on a really, really immobile... Oh, that's a Gragas ult down too. Looks like they did. Oh my gosh, that's a Max Rain hook landed by the Thresh. Shivana does pick up one in the fight. Buff the plane going really low. Alan picking up just another kill. Callista scaling more and more as this fight goes on. Lots of red stacks down onto Munda Hover. Munda pops the ult, tries to get away. Suncatcher coming in from the side. Spirit rushing in, trying to use the Foxfire to do as much as possible. Trying to go for this back lane. Picks up Alan, gets the shutdown goal. However, one more auto from Oriana should do it. Anna Kluzmos on Shivana trying to get away. Mundo on her right now. Doesn't look like he's going to chase all the way down. But that ultimate from Nautilus almost did enough to pick up the kill on Shivana. So that entire fight was a result of beautiful wave management as well as Thresh coming up big in that team this fight. Rocket right land. This rocket might land. This rocket might land. This rocket did land. Jason getting just another, another snipe on this. But it looks like Fusion Fire going to go in all by himself. I don't think he's going to be able to pick up this kill. There's an Orianna shield and the Thresh shield available for Larry. Oh, looks like they're just going to let him go. Tell your friends. All right, so like I said, that there, there were massive waves building up in the mid lane and the bot lane. They had to send people to deal with that, and they elected to send the Ari, and they got the Mundo to go to the bot lane as well. And what that did is that made it so there were only three people on the top lane. They elected to stay to try and defend the top lane, and then Lyric threw out a beautiful hook when um, Jason on Jinx stepped a little bit too far forward, had to burn the flash, and then he threw out another hook once the flash was already burned, was able to connect on that one. And then Oriana Mochi Balls coming up big with a three-man shockwave in the top lane. We're securing three kills for a team at the end of that one. And um, just beautiful play by Thresh in general. And then the follow-up by Mochi Balls was massive there as well. And uh, the team coming up big there. And Kalista at this point has now completed the Hurricane. Um, she also built Home Guards, which is a little bit of wasted gold there. Not sure if that was completely necessary. But, um... Gotta go fast, man. Gotta go fast. Fast, fast, fast. <laughs> Your goal lead just back to dead even once again. <laughs> this was the kind of... This was the kind of progression I was really hoping for. 25, 30 minutes into the game. Like I said in Sham Select, if they manage to stay in relative arm's length of each other gold-wise, these team fights could really go in anyone's favor. Um, would you give the advantage to anybody at this point in the game, considering that they're essentially dead even in gold? Well, normally, I would give the advantage here to Team Replace Allen because they have the stronger team fighting comp, but Suncatcher on Ari is just so fed with 7 kills, and Jinx is also so fed with 5 kills. They, The two carries combined have 12 of the 13 kills on their team, so the gold is on who it needs to be on team uh, team name. So they're not really, they're, they have a good team fight. Ari can 100-0 anyone on their team with this build. And uh, she's very fed, so you have to be very careful of her assassination potential. And that's why I think this game could still go either way. Um. In addition, um, noting that while Team Replace Allen does have the better team fighting potential, especially considering that Kalista does massive AoE with her Hurricane and her Ren, Team Name has two Righteous Glories on them. And with the Team Comp that you really don't want anywhere near your carries, <coughs> excuse me, Having those two Righteous Glories puts a lot, a lot of pressure on Mochi Balls. And calm down, I'm trying to make sure that they don't get caught even the slightest bit out of position. Because once you that, see that Righteous Glory being popped, Nautilus can flash forward, dredge line into you, and get the Depth Charge off. Gragas can land a nice exploding cast to just completely separate you from your front line. So those Righteous Glories probably going to come in play. Sejuani doing 
her best to finish that out, but only has the catalyst so far. As long as Mochi Balls can stay safe in these team fights, I think Team Replace Allen will be in a very good spot here. Um, she needs to be, she needs to utilize her shockwave to its fullest potential. As long as she doesn't get caught and is able to peel for the rest of her team when, when Team uh, Team Name dives in with those righteous glories, they'll come out on top. And that's all they need to wait for to make this team composition work out. And uh, Team name they have to realize that Oriana is the one that they need to focus fire in the skirmish because if she lands a shockwave it could be very detrimental to their team fight and Colin has been on point with those shockwaves as well so they're definitely gonna have to be really really scared of that because especially with the team comp like Moon though Gragas Nautilus where you all just want to jump on one person at once Having three people hugging each other. Oh my gosh, Jason gets completely caught out by the Glacial Prison. But however, their support does respond with the Depth Charge onto Allen. Both ADCs gonna be separated. Fusion Fire on the front line, expecting more follow -up. not gonna get it. Allen does pick up one kill with the Callista Ren, and the Klusmo's going super, super deep. Colin picks up one with the Shockwave, so that is an ultimate off the table. Suncatcher responds. Oh, that's a two-piece from Jason. One more auto, that is three for Jason. Calm down, this could be the Quadra kill for the Jinx. This opens up Baron. Yeah, so like I said, team replace on there to wait for team uh, team name to dive in, and they would have the advantage in the team fight. But that's not what happened. Team replace Allen was the one who decided to initiate that team fight, and they forced way too hard. Oriana landing a shockwave that wasn't anywhere close to optimal, only on the Gragas, and didn't even pick up the kill onto him. So they only got Nautilus in that team fight, and they got wiped. So a very poor team fight for them, and it looks like they will lose their inhibitor at the back end of that one. Jason probably saying that getting caught out there by the glacial prison was hashtag calculated. But man, if I feel like Team even though Allen. he got hit by the glacial tomb, he has both of his summoners up. He didn't use anything, and that just speaks volumes. Team replace Allen, even though they got the the Sejuani ultimate onto um, Jason on Jinx, they just didn't. The, the team wasn't ready. There was no communication happening there. They they didn't expect it to happen. And now it looks like they will be going for a desperation, Baron. The question here is, will they pick it up? A hook landing on to Nautilus. Yeah, Nautilus and Mundo will really, really tank it, but not offering a whole lot of damage there themselves. <laughs> Jason does pick up one with a cross map snipe, but it looks like they are going to be able to pick up lots of lots of Ren stacks down from Kalista. Allen does manage to finish this, that one off. Looks like they're going to turn their attention towards the <laughs> enemies. Fusion Fire and Blahmaster both going down there. However, buff the playing. Jason and Suckcatcher arriving a little too wow. late to get any cleanup off of that. So when Everyone I I they thought that they were going to go for Baron, but it looks like they elected to take the inhibitor, completely forgetting that that play was completely on the table for Team Replace Allen. So they responded really, really well to that situation. I still can't believe everyone made it out of that pit alive. It looked like Ari would clean up that fight, but she, I think she used all three of her stacks just to get into the pit. And then everyone just ran out. So, so yeah, even well, though Jinx picked up the kill with the rocket, nothing else gained from that one. And uh, Jinx will secure the third dragon for her team, though. This Jinx is terrifying right now. 10, 1, and 6. I but e Alan on Calm Down, I'm trying, does have 7 kills of his own. So, not too far behind in terms of damage threat. So relatively speaking, the advantage isn't too large, but Jinx having kills is always not a very good sign because Jinx is a massive hyper carry. And you always have to be careful about what you can bring to team fights. Even away from team fights too, we saw him pick up a couple of absolute, probably like three or four absolutely nasty cross map kills with the super mega death rocket. Jason yeah, on point with those snipes. Yep, the super mega. The super mega death rock is coming in huge in this game. Suncatcher though might get frisky in the mid lane. It doesn't happen. Let Shivana go. Not her type. Wolf dragons aren't for everyone. Confirmed. You know what it is for everybody though? Korean barbecue? A delicious serving of soft serve that you can get at your local yogurt land. 
<laughs> with a delicious with a side of mochi balls. With the side of mochi balls, you can put them in in your yogurt, on top of your yogurt, in a cup next to your yogurt. But whatever you want to do, that is what Yogurtland is there for you for. <laughs> Colin Moji needs to step it up compared to this other mid laner if he wants to keep this sponsorship though. Well, he does have his core item build finished. He has the Athenes, he has the Death Cap, and he has the Void. He just needs to land a good Shockwave. I believe. But do you believe? I do believe. Oh, Suncatcher, as I say, I believe in Colin Mochi. Does get tagged up by the Charm. That's going to take him a lot out of the fight. However, Suncatcher drawing the attention to five people does manage to pick up the kill onto... I don't know how that even happened. Looks like this team is split up. The Fusion Fire taking a lot of attention from Kalista. Hopping forward with that Marshall Voice. Nobody looking at Kalista whatsoever. She's just going to attack the minions now. But it does look like Suncatcher finally going down. Alan picking up even more gold for himself. But it looks like over here we do see a split push coming in. Jason on Jinx taking out towers and in hip so, so fast. This should be a second in hip down. For team name, team name gonna pick up another one. Support on support action happening across the map, but it doesn't matter. They still have the attention of everybody. Kalista coming in, trying. To oh my gosh, those crits hurt way too much. Really, really hard to do one on one against the Jinx with that much crit. Look at them. Look like they're trying to play to stop the back game. Blomaster doing his best to stop the backs of all of these players. Nobody has back just yet. Just Mochi coming up off a of respawn. Look at how much stuff they're getting. They got one Nexus Tower, another inhib before they're finally going to back out of there, buff the plank. And Jason trying to get out of there. However, one of them probably going to get caught out. Actually, both of them looking like they're going to get caught out here. But they got a whole lot of objectives from that. Yeah, so two in here is now down for team replace Allen. But the mid lane in him will respawn soon enough. Yep, just as I say that, looks like it does respawn. So just the bottom in him down. But I think team, uh, team name definitely comes out on top there. With the... Nexus turret, I mean, not ne inhibitor turret in the bottom lane going down as well as the inhibitor. Um, in terms of kills, I think team Replace Allen came out on top, I believe. They got more kills there. Not sure by how much. It was a very long team fight, technically. Yeah, that was beautifully played across the map, though. Blomaster doing a lot to stop and delay the backs of those three people. If Colin hadn't come up off of respawn, I feel like they would have lost a lot more. Because Callista wasn't able to do anything. Callista really got an extended team fights where she's able to do a lot of AoE. But one on one against the Jinx with all the crit that comes from an IE and a PD, not gonna happen. Yep, definitely gonna have to agree with you on that one. And now the game looks like it has reset itself. This bot lane in hip though is going to be down for this dragon and baron response. We'll have to see if team replace Allen does anything about it. If uh, team name overcommits this next dragon, they may be able to sneak another baron. But it doesn't look like team name is falling for any of those shenanigans. Looks like they will be on the top side of the map. And will these two teams? No, they will not be going into the tri bushes. It's going to be really interesting considering that it is the bot lane in him down. If they manage to get somebody to split off to divert attention to those super minions poke. Will a base there. race be happening? This is the making of a base race right now. Okay, it looks like they're going for the top tower. Team name is, but it looks like team replace Allen going for this mid in hip tower. We'll see if they want to race this all the way. Thresh the only one back there trying to finish it up. Jinx does have faster tower pushing potential. Then the Callista over Suncatcher managed to push out of there. Jason, Fusion Fire, Blomaster. Looks like they're going straight for the Nexus Towers. Why wouldn't you, considering that they already have an inhib down? Looks like they're trying to stop the backs, trying to stop the TP. TP not being able to be stopped. Suncatcher doing his best to delay the backs of everybody else. Colin Mochi Ball's gonna go down to the Ignite. However, Suncatcher does get tagged up as well. Looks like they weren't able to finish that. Keeping an eye on this Nexus turret though. Looks like minions oh are gonna be able to finish that up. There's nobody over there to finish that off right now. They're all being taken care of in the midnight. Anna Kluzmo's probably gonna go down to this Mundo. Lyric doing his best to finish that up. This Nexus is at 50% HP right now. They're storming their way into the base. Jason. What are you doing? Just run past it. Hit the freaking Nexus, dude. Looks like they're just going to manage to take the Intnib once again. That is crazy. Nexus almost going down to Winions there. I believe they did have the opportunity to end the game there, but they did go for the safer play. They went for the inhibitor turret in the mid lane. Not a bad call for them. Playing it safe. Don't want to throw this game away by any means. 
forcing anything or forcing any plays. They don't want to give any more kills up to team replace Allen um, since the gold is very even. Uh, but, you know, now the Nexus is exposed. Two inhibitors down. And no Nexus turrets to speak of is very unfortunate for team replace Allen. And uh, Baron is now up, so that will probably be a contested objective for these next few minutes. Or we'll have to see if Team Replace Allen even bothers to contest it at all. It looks like Team Replace Allen not knowing that they probably think the dragon is still up. Jason just solo dragon by himself. There was no vision on behalf of Team Replace Allen around that dragon pit. So in their mind, there are two objectives to contest right now. Without Then again, actually that's not true. They probably could have seen the dragon being picked up by just clicking on their stats but there's a slight chance that they weren't able to see it but it does look like they're completely unable to leave their base considering they have no nexus turrets to defend their nexus so they're just going to stay on the baron right now this baron's going down really really fast absolutely no concession coming down from it this should be the final push coming in from team name we'll have to see what happens here um this is going to be the last stand for team replace Allen. And we'll have to see if uh, Team Name can power through this matchup here and pick up their first win of the tournament. And this is really interesting seeing from Team Name, considering that we were laughing at Team Name all throughout our meeting today because Jason just wanted to show us how bad they threw in their last game. Considering that the last game they sh they really showed like they didn't have enough shot calling, this game is like a completely different team. They're rotating in ways that I haven't seen this team even attempt to do before, but they do get caught out by that. Shockwave completely whips. Looks like there's a lot of damage. This is the final stand coming down. Anna Kluzma is doing his best to get to the back line, but not enough. Oriana does pick up one. Komari gonna go down to Jinx. Jinx picking up so many kills. That is two for Jinx. Calm down, I'm trying. Colin, the only two carries alive. Jinx doing so much. Those get excited and those crits. Way too much. This is gonna be the second quadra of the game for Jason. You know Jason's gonna make us watch this one for every single meeting of the rest of the year. GG's to both teams. Team name does move on. Team replace Allen out of the tournament. Yep, and Team Replace Allen will now have a chance to move on to Loser's Bracket Round 3, I believe. Is it? Let me check that for you guys. Yep, it looks like Team Replace Allen will be moving on to Loser's Bracket Round 3. They haven't secured any prizing as of yet, but if they win one more match, they will have secured at least a fourth place finish, which is a 800 RP minimum for each team, or for each player on the team. Um, I believe we have one more game going on right now, so do you want to jump right into that one? We can jump right into that one. I'm not sure if it's still... Oh, it is still going on. You know what? It's at 40 minutes into the game. Oh, we can't spectate, though. Oh, yes, we can. Guys, I we're going to jump into the I winner's have bracket. I anyone room. added. Actually. I may be able to get into it. To get into it through me. Oh, I just got in. I think Combatier is watching the game as well, so I'm just going in through him. Yep, he is watching the game. All right, I am loading into this game. 40 minutes in, supposedly. Oh my god, there has been a Mordekaiser pick in this matchup. Okay, I don't even know what to say. Captain Kernuckles in the top lane for Team... What's this team even called? Team Tree. Team Tree picked up Mordekaiser in the top lane. There's a brand in the game in the mid lane. What has been going on here? And it looks like they are winning as well. So a 12k gold lead. For Team Tree with this Mordekaiser pickup. They like can have they they like can have Blitzcrank again too. Interesting yeah. that they didn't ban that away from him, considering you know, we were all talking about how Killer is a Blitzcrank main and that's pretty much all he plays. They didn't take that away from him. Atik, where in the game are you right now? Because I feel like we're completely unsynced. I'm at 2641. Just kidding, we're completely synced. <laughs> Chopstick Hero, Nautilus in the jungle this time. Ring Phobia doing her best to get herself out of there. Does manage to make it out. Alright, let's try to let's try to get up to speed with what's happening in this game. Looks like Team Tree does have Baron. 
11 K ahead in gold. Rank phobia gets caught out. Land me stealing kills again, so that's pretty consistent. Interesting, Lambie with the Morello. Yeah, strange build there. This mo this woman loves AP on supports. So, it's really, really fun to jump into a game right in the middle of it, but at least we can bring this on stream to you guys. If I had to give a prediction, I would say Team Tree, the blue team, does have this relatively in the back. Oh, Tapeworm does get caught out by the hook. Ken saying goodbye. Nunu manages to steal that kill, though. Nick, what a scumbag. Hatron picking up the kill on that. Okay, let's take a look at what's going on. Jigga Jiggas. Two full well, items he behind. He is wrecking is what's happening right now. Yeah. But look at Killer going in for those Blitzkrieg Grime again. It does look like that they're going to have follow-up in time. Lamy comes in for the disengage with the tidal wave. That's a beautiful bubble landing on Ken. Mordekaiser picks up too. Metal Man going huge. John. John, John, can he do it? John does pick up the double kill. Oh no, get out of turret range! <laughs> Barely surviving there, life stealing off of that. Nami's ebb and flow gonna survive him. Four players down for the other team. Looks like this is gonna be game. Nick going in, trying to secure the last kill. But just gonna give up the clean ace after that one. Chopstick hero like drawing the surrender. Well, aren't we glad we jumped into that one, guys? <laughs> I kind of wish I saw the rest of her. However, I do believe that this game was streamed by another party. So we're going to get updates for you on that. If we can get the VOD for you, that would be awesome as well. Look how pro we are, Atik. Two games happening at the same time, and we casted both of them. GG to Team Tree. Looks like they're going to go ahead and pick up a win off of that one. Yep. Just, oh my gosh. I, I just pulled up the damage chart right now. I would urge that you do the same. It's oh, not very often out. that you see a Nami out damage a Tristana at a game that went to about 30 minutes. Ouchie. Oh my gosh. I really wanted to see this game. How does that even happen? I don't know, but it looks like their entire team got wrecked by the looks of it. No kidding. Look at the damage. Oh my god. Alright, well it's been a long night of casting. So it's time to call it a night. It has been. We came straight from Korean Barbecue with the club to cast both of these games. Thank you guys for tuning in. We had two games tonight. In the end, we did have team name. And we had, what was the other team that advanced on? We had Team Tree from this game, the, the game we just hopped into the end of. We had Team Name from the Losers Bracket. And on top of that, from the first game, we had Team Cash Money taking out Team Manuel Jimenez to move on in the Winners Bracket to get to the semifinals there. So keep an eye out on the Fullerton page if you want to get a closer look at the bracket. We should have more games coming Sometime in the next week, possibly over this weekend, I'm not exactly sure. Keep an eye out for that because the stream link will be posted if we do have games. But otherwise, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'll try to pull those highlights. Lots of sick highlights that came out from tonight. Definitely Jason's double quadra kills. Going to go up for sure. But anyway, have a good night, guys. I was your host and play-by-play -play shoutcaster Josh. With me, we had our club president, the man, the fun, fun, fun Atik. Good night, guys.